Hi friends. Um, I hope that you can hear me okay with all of this noisy ocean going on behind me. I'll speak up just in case. So it's Nick here and uh, I'm sitting by the beach. I'll just give you a quick view of what it is that uh, I'm sitting near. So I have I have a favorite log on the beach. This might sound strange, but maybe those of you who are also Canadian beachers understand. And I wish I could show you um, what it looks like. Maybe I'll, I'll try to take a photo and stick it in if I can. But I have this favorite log because it sort of almost has like a backrest and then it's got like a long part that you can like extend your legs out on. And uh, this is like, like sort of my log. And I'm always surprised when I come here that like nobody's ever in my spot. You know, my spot on the beach. So anyways, I'm sitting on my log. I'm at the beach. And I just wanted to pop in and talk a little bit about um, something that I've been seeing coming up a lot lately. So those of you that are, are students of mine will know that I often say in my classes, thank yourself for taking this time out of your busy life to recharge your batteries, to heal, to ground, to center, to anchor, for whatever it is that brought you to the mat that day. Thank yourself for coming and acknowledge that when you do that, you then have more presence and patience and energy for those that you love and for your community and for the world at large. So I say this in every single class. And you know, because sometimes when you say things on repeat, I think students can just kind of get used to hearing it without actually thinking about, you know, what those words mean. So I want to break those down a little bit and I'll use an example. So if I'm feeling um, anxious, frustrated, um, impatient, irritated, etc., etc., then I'm not going to respond to people. I'm going to be reactive. I'm going to react to people instead of respond. And whether this is in person or on social media, because, oh my God, Facebook is a special kind of hell right now in this moment. Um, so whichever it is, whether it's in person or whether it's, you know, virtually, if you or yourself are not feeling resourced, then you can't be the person that you really are. Um, when you're dealing with other people, especially if those other people happen to have different beliefs than you. And this is a big problem. This not being resourced is a really big problem. Because what it does is then it makes people react instead of respond, say things perhaps they don't mean, or type things that perhaps they don't mean. Or that in hindsight they realize, ooh, that was maybe a bit of an overreaction. And you can't take those things back. So when we take the time out that we need for ourselves, whether that's through your physical asana practice, the poses, or your breath work, or your meditation, or just a really long hot bath with kitten risky videos, okay, maybe that's just me, but whatever it is that you need to take for yourself for self-care, that allows you to come from a place when you interact with others of a place of being grounded in yourself and resourced. And this is always challenging in our busy world that we live in where we're constantly going from one thing to the next thing to the next thing and we're constantly plugged in so it's already difficult. And then you add COVID and now it's become extreme. And what I'm seeing is a lot of judgment and a lot of divisiveness and a lot of right and wrong and a lot of lashing out at people and for those of us like myself that are sensitive souls those of us that are empathic or highly sensitive people 
even if you're not directly involved in the the dynamic it's super draining even just reading it or seeing it amongst people you know is really really draining it's really exhausting and it, the world can feel really heavy right now earlier in the week i don't know if it was this week or late last week a few days ago i had posted a picture I'll describe it for those who didn't see it, of two friends holding hands. Um, I don't know where the picture's from. It was a share from a share from a, you know, one of those things. Fred shared it, I grabbed it. But it was two friends holding hands and they were walking away holding hands and each of them had a sign. They must have been at some sort of um, rally or something. Each of them had a sign and one said, um, I'm vaccinated and I'm pro-choice. And the other one said, I'm unvaccinated and I'm pro-choice. My intention with posting that picture was just to remind us that, you know, like the, what was the slogan at the beginning of COVID? We're all in this together. Wasn't that the slogan that was going around? That we are all in this together and that everybody is doing the best that they can with the knowledge and the information that they have. And that we can still love each other. That was my whole intention with posting it. It was just, hey, don't forget, you don't have to start hating your friends right now because they have a different choice than you. You can still choose to love them. Um, and I got a question in the comments and then basically a teacher just went on a, you know, a campaign to try to educate me about the benefits of vaccines. Ironically, I didn't put anything in that picture or anything else anywhere else on my profile that said how I felt about vaccines or whether or not I was vaccinated. This person just assumed because I shared a picture of two friends, one vaccinated and one not, walking together, that I must be anti-vax and I must not be vaccinated without even checking with me. And then went on this big tirade of like educating me. And when I tried to, you know, point this out, it was sort of fell on deaf ears, you know. Um, so basically they turned a post, which on my end was about unity and friendship and love and reminding people that that's possible and tried to turn it into some big political thing about, you know, vaccines and passports and blah, blah, blah. And this is happening all over the place right now i have dear friends who are sweet sensitive souls like me who have just logged off completely they're just like i cannot even like the fighting is ridiculous i can't even watch it anymore and sometimes that's the wisest thing is to just you know walk away walk away from it so that's been heavily on my mind in the last week or so and on my heart I have not experienced this kind of divisiveness and judgment and uh, separation since I was a member of Occupy all those years ago, which of course was one of the biggest misunderstood movements. And as a, as a Calgarian at the time living in Calgary, it was not a very popular one. Calgary does not really like um, any activism that is, you know, against sort of big oil or you know predatory capitalism or anything like that it's very very hard to be an activist in calgary and so just by being a member of occupy i experienced a ton of judgment and criticism and uh just like horrible things said about the people that were that were choosing to to join this all without any understanding of course not asking questions just jumping to conclusions and judgments and then criticism. So I did another video um, a while ago, a few days ago. I was actually going to post it um, on my Instagram and on my Facebook business page. But right after I recorded it and then posted it to my personal page, it <laughs> my phone died. So and I got it repaired, but I don't have all my stuff. I lost videos and photos and appointments and, you know, all the things. Anyone who's been through it knows. So I don't have that one. I'll see if I can make it public and include a link below this one 
Um, if you're watching it on Facebook, it won't work on Instagram because you can't do links, but I'm sitting here by the sea, the ocean actually, but one of my friends started calling when I would make these little videos by the ocean, stories by the sea. So that's my story by the sea, is that even those people who should, and I'm doing air quotes here, know better, right? Because they're yoga teachers and they've studied the philosophy of yoga, will still be pulled into this sort of us and them mentality. This, you are wrong because I am right. It's black and white, no gray. No room even for questions before judging and assuming. Just assumptions. Just grand assumptions and judgment. And this is what happens when we're not feeling resourced. When we don't feel grounded, when our nervous system is all over the place, which for a lot of us it is right now, then we, we get jumpy, we get snappish, um, we get critical, we get impatient. And this is one of the reasons why I believe that actually a yoga practice, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's the physical asana or the meditation or the pranayama, hopefully a collection of all of the above, is so essential in our world. And not just for us, because of course, if I do my practice, I feel more grounded, I feel more calm, I feel more steady, I have more patience. So not only does that help me feel better, but when I come from that state of mind and that state of heart, then I'm less likely to be judgmental and critical and impatient. I'm less likely to react and I'm more likely to be able to respond. I'm more likely able to ask questions than make assumptions. And if that is not you right now, if, you have, if you're listening to me right now and you have found, oh shit, I've been doing some of that, I've been like freaking out in people's comments on Facebook or I've been judging people whether it's out loud or quietly about their decisions and I've been othering them meaning like we're not we're not united you over there me over here I'm right you're wrong I would encourage you to take some time out for yourself and to find a way to come back into your center and of course yoga is very helpful for this and if you need help with that you can reach out I have in-person classes and also live class at live zoom classes so if I can be of service to you in helping give you some regular time to uh, sorry I had to adjust my log sitting um, if I can be of service to helping you um, find that that time to ground to center then please feel free to reach out you can just leave me a comment and I'll, I'll send you information or just get on my website which is nykdanu slash if you're a student slash students sorry nykdanu.com slash students if you're teachers it's slash teachers it's just my name dot com and then either slash students or teachers so I have classes I have one called yoga for anxious times I have classes for back care, I have yin, but all of the classes um, start with an, a long period of grounding and centering at the beginning. There's, these are what I call my bookends. So at the very beginning of practice, we have a grounding and a centering that I guide you through. And then also at the end, we have either a nice long shavasana or my yoga for anxious times class ends with a yoga nidra practice. So either one. They're bookended with opportunities for you to ground, to center, to come back to yourself so that you can be who you really are. Because who you really are is not small and critical and judgmental and impatient and irritated. It's not who you really are. It might be how you're acting right now. And if so, I would encourage you to take some time and get some resources and some self-care, therapy, whatever you need, acupuncture, yoga, whatever it is, that's not who you are. That might be how you're acting, but it is not who you are. Our truest selves know that there is no separation between us, that I am not different from you. I might be different, but that we're one at the same time. 
This is often confusing in yoga circles. It's like, wait a minute, how can we all be completely unique and yet we're one? How does that make sense? Well, it makes sense in this way. And I'll give you a couple examples. Let's just talk snowflakes, right? We always hear that snowflakes can never be repeated. Each one is totally unique and will never ever be repeated. And a snowflake is still frozen water. So even though each individual snowflake has its own personal representation, they're all made of the same stuff. You'd say the same thing with um, the ocean, right? Each wave is unique, but it's all part of the ocean. It's all made of the same stuff. So for those of you who have been noticing the judgment, the criticism, the sense of othering, the right, the wrong, the us, the them, the, you know, you're a shitty person because of this, or you're a stupid person because of this, all of that that's been going on. If you've been witnessing this and it's been weighing heavy on your heart, I feel you. Literally, I feel you. This is how we get when fear leads and love takes the back seat. When fear leads and love takes the back seat, we forget that we are all one. And this is why an opportunity to regular, regularly practice self-care, which I actually could just say self-love, taking time to ground, to anchor, to center yourself, is so crucial not only for your own well-being and your own nervous system, but also for the world around you so that you have more presence and patience and energy and kindness and compassion. That you're able to see beyond your immediate reaction and take a little step back and sit with uncomfortable feelings and ask yourself what is true before I respond or choosing not to respond because that's totally possible too, believe it or not. You can actually scroll by something you don't agree with and not respond. I know, shocking, it's true. I do it all day, every day. So I hope that this is helpful for those of you that have been witnessing this and feeling the weight of it whether it's in your family or community or online. I hope it's also helpful for those of you that may have taken the brunt of it like I did, where suddenly you're defending yourself constantly over a simple, innocent thing. And I also especially hope it's helpful for those of you that heard me say this and just went, oh shit, I've done that. I've been doing that. I've been judging people. I've been critiquing people. I've been making assumptions. I've been categorizing people as right and wrong as inconsiderate, as safe and unsafe. There's no room for love when fear is driving. So take some time, rest, nourish yourself. Practice some self-love so that you can be that love in your community and in your family, in the world at large. And if I can be of service in that process of helping you to ground, to center, to anchor, please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments and uh, we'll connect. All right, y'all, I'm going to get to watching the beach instead of filming myself in front of it. And I'm sending you much love and I'll talk to you soon.